welcome to crack it today we are going to see an interesting topic which is nothing but improving the api's performance this is a very popular interview question and also this you may face in your daily life while developing APIs. Suppose say your prod released your API and from the consumer you are getting a complaint saying that your API is like taking much time to respond. So you need to sit analyze on what are the things which are the things are taking much time and how you can improve the the performance of the API. So I have uh, quoted few common things which can improve the api's performance so the first thing uh, these are the ways in which we can improve our uh, api's performance and those are pagination logging caching payload compression connection pool rate limiting at auto scaling there may be few others as well i have as i mentioned earlier i have like quoted here a very important features which can improve the uh, api's performance so let's now see in detail how pagination helps in improving the performance. Suppose say I have an API which uh, which there is a possibility uh, to retain 2 lakh records from that API. Suppose say I have a products API wherein I have like 2 lakh products stored in my database. If suppose I am calling my API using slash products uh to uh, to get all the products do i need will will i be able to see all the two lakh products at once is that a viable solution the answer is no why because it's always good to use pagination suppose the requested or the consumer can request for a specific pages or the specific limit they can send through which we can implement pagination in the server side and from the server side we can return only that data processing 2 lakh data will take much time than just processing 20 data so pagination will definitely improve your performance of the rest api also it's always a good practice to return only the first page to the users and to provide the links of the first page last page previous page uh, or like providing the uh, uh, request parameters as a page numbers so that if they want specific third page number wherein they can send the request parameter equals three which will return third page to them so that's always a good way to use pagination so why do we need to use pagination processing uh, a huge number of records say two lakh will take much time Processing 20 records will take only the less time. So pagination is to break the larger set of data into smaller chains. What next? It will help to reduce the amount of data transferred over the network. Yes, it, it will definitely reduce. Why? Because sending the whole is a huge data, but I can, I can uh, just send a first page data, which will definitely reduce the amount of data that is transferred to the network, which will improve the performance of the API what next we can use query parameters like page and limit yes as i told earlier if you want to return only the thir third page and if you want the each page to uh, display 20 records yes you can you can do that by using the query parameters next you can provide the rehetios links uh, like uh, for the next page if you want to go click the link which will uh, uh, populate the details of the next page suppose say i have uh, i am on page number one my next page link will be page number two which will have next 20 records so we can similarly provide the previous and the current page links or the last page links to make the transition easier so pagination will definitely improve the performance of the api what next next is caching yes retrieving our data from the database will take much time when compared to retrieving data from the cache yes why because if we need to connect uh, if suppose uh, my api api1 is called i need to connect to a database so i ha i may have a separate database layer wherein i have a separate api or whatever like it, it is completely based on my implementation so to call the database i need to open the database connection pool i need to connect to the database i need to execute my query the executing the query will take some amount of time and my db will return and from there i need to return my response to the consumer but if i need to uh, if i'm using cache in my application 
it is very easy for us to return the data from the cache yes uh, if a consumer calls the specific api api will check whether it is present in the cache or not if it's present in the cache it will just return the data there is no need for us to execute the query in the database so caching will also improve the uh, performance also uh, uh, the what we can do is uh, to make our cache uh, with the updated data always we can refresh the cache asynchronously for every few seconds that's completely our, uh, um, our that will be based on the configuration the time that we uh, we define so the cache can be refreshed uh, asynchronously for every few seconds also uh, it, as I told earlier, querying from the database will take much time. Querying from the cache will take less time. So for cache, we can use a Redis cache. Why? Because like Redis cache will use a in-memory database, which will be like, uh, sorry, store data in an in-memory, which will be very faster than the database. What next? Our code. How do we need to write our code? Uh, we need to write our code to search in the cache first. If it is not present in the cache, then it, need, it needs to go uh, check in the database, query in the database, come back to the cache, populate the cache, then it needs to return the response so that if the same query is getting uh, next time, we can fetch it from the cache. We need to write our code in that way. The performance of the REST API application. So it's always good to avoid accessing logging in our application. Why do we need to avoid excessive logging? It is because increased logging will in result in increased time spent in logging. So logging will also take some amount of time. So if we have lots of logs in our application, that will also take a specified amount of time. So it's always good to avoid excessive logging. If you need it, yes, you, you log it. It's not good practice to log each and everything in your application. Also, it's always best to check the logging level before logging. Suppose you are writing one logger for debugging something. That should be as logger debug only and not as logger info. Why? Because logger info we will use in the production environments. Logger debug we will use in the development environments. By mistake, if I provide logger info, what will happen all the logs that i have provided for debugging like the logs that i have provided for debugging with logger info will display in the production environment as well and that will take some considerable amount of time to print those logs so it's always best to check the logging level before logging irrespective of the log levels configured why even if we configure it as info if i if suppose i give some debug logs as info that will get printed so it's always best to check the logging level for the logs next is a very important concept which we are using in the microservices world today which is nothing but the asynchronous logging so in the asynchronous logging what will happen we will not uh, synchronously log uh, the loggers instead what we'll do so if we get a log in our application we will send those logs to the buffer and we'll come back and we'll start our execution so what will happen from the buffer again those logs will be written to the disk periodically so the only uh, drawback with asynchronous logging is it will take some time there will be a latency time latency for the logs uh, suppose say uh, our code is executed even there may be a chance that even after that the logs will get executed but the logs will be there in the disk but that that's that that's a asynchronous thing so if we are doing logging in asynchronous uh, it, there's no need for the execution pointer to wait until the logger completes and then it needs to come back to the execution. No, that's not the case. It's very easy. It will just push it to buffer. Like it will just send the logs to buffer. Whichever place we configured, it will come back. It will not wait until logging is happening. So these are the ways in which we improve the performance through logging. How? We can avoid excessive login. We can always check the logging level. And in the microservices world, we can use the asynchronous logging. Next is payload compression. So what is payload compression? Compressing the request payload and the response payload. If a request or the response payload is huge, then that will take uh, some network latency. That will take some considerable amount of time to transmit the data. So what we can do, we can compress our data request body and the response body with a zip so that the size of the data transmitted is smaller, which will take less time to transmit the data from one network to another, which will 
in turn improve the upload and the download speed so payload compression is also one of the suggested ways through which we can improve our performance of the rest api if our request and response body are huge what next we can use the connection pools yes as we discussed earlier if you are doing database connections what we need to do we need to open the connection we need to query it when we are coming back we need to close the connection come back that's an overhead why each time we need to open and close the connection what we can do instead we can configure a connection pool so what will this connection pool do this connection pool will manage the connection life cycle so there's no need for me to explicitly go open the database or close the database who will do it connection pool will do it only if i configure the connection pool that is enough for me so if suppose uh, let's consider for 1 millisecond i am getting a uh, 10000 uh, i need to hit my database 10,000 times so 10,000 times I need to open and close the database so that that is getting avoided if we are using connection pool so which will increase the performance of the rest API application why because my uh, it's not my uh, uh, responsibility to open and close the database it's the connection pools responsibility next is rate limiting rate limiting is nothing but limiting the number of requests to the api this we can perform both in the client side and the server side how we can do in the server side is from the server uh, from the server side i can configure or i can rate limit my api to accept only 500 requests for five minutes from a specified client so if a client uh, c1 is sending me 500 requests and if they are trying to send me the five of uh, 501 501 request within that five minutes of time i need to send them back saying that like only in this specified amount of time you can send only 500 requests so you you have like exceeded the uh, number of requests that you can send you can you maybe try after some time that i can let the client know also we can control it from the client side <laughs> from the client side itself while calling the api we can mention that for the specific client c1 we can send only these number of requests so we can rate limit our api from the client side as well as next is using auto scaling in our application to improve the performance of the api so before starting this i request you all to like share comment and subscribe the video if you like the content we have started this channel new so we request you to support our channel through your likes comments shares and subscriptions so uh, how can auto scaling help to improve the performance so if we deploy our apis within the auto scaling groups what will happen in the peak times the number of instances of the api will get increased suppose say from the two instances two it will get increased to five instance so my uh, the traffic on the instances will get shared between equally between the uh, five instances using the load balancer so if the number of instances if suppose uh, let's consider uh, in a specified amount say uh, five minutes I am getting thousand requests so performing those thousand requests in two instances will be faster than uh, performing those thousand requests in five instances so if we have auto scaling in place what will happen in the peak times the number of instances will get increased accordingly and in the normal times number of instances will get decreased so that my performance of the application can be increased during the peak hours by increasing the number of instances automatically the load to the two instances will automatically get diverged to the other three nodes which will considerably increase the performance of the rest api so if you can uh, spend amount for the uh, auto scaling group yes that will also improve the performance of the rest api so with all these te techniques that we saw today we can improve the performance of the restful apis this is a very popular interview question be prepared for it thanks for watching crack it please do like comment share and subscribe for the updates